Welcome back to the charismatic voice. So many of you have been begging for Avenged Sevenfold. I just couldn't say no. So today I'm going to listen to them for the first time. And I've chosen a song that I was told particularly features the clean vocals of their lead singer well. It's called So Far Away. Let's get to it. Never feared for anything. Never shame, but never free. A life that healed the broken heart with all that it could. Lived the life so endlessly. Saw beyond what others see. I tried to heal your broken heart with all that I could. Will you stay? For some reason, I was expecting a voice that had a little bit of a higher center overall. Instead, it's lower and honestly more soothing than I'd pictured. I I guess I thought that they would be more just total power metal, closer to screaming and definitely more soothing. But I should uh, say this with a caveat. I know that this song is a tribute essentially to their drummer who passed away, uh, Jimmy the Rev Sullivan. And so I think that this is one of their softer songs overall. And I think it's Mike Portnoy that's uh, filling in for the drums on this. Okay, back to the beginning. Never feared for anything. Never shame, but never free. A life that healed the broken heart. I love all of the Iron Maiden references here. I'm guessing that the Rev really liked Iron Maiden. Or maybe Iron Maiden is just a big inspiration of the band overall. I love the little that, that. He does a little sort of quick slide up at one point on that. That's fun. It's tossed off. There's also, I hear a lot of nasal focus in this sound too, which is interesting because I still feel like it's very soothing. Never shame, but never free. A life that healed the broken heart with all that it could. Lived the life so endlessly. Saw beyond what others see. I tried to heal your broken heart with all that I could. Will you stay? I'm digging some of the really subtle harmonies that are layered in here as well. In what I would call the pre-chorus, there is a there was a really subtle octave higher uh, double essentially, and then we got to the chorus here, and there's a subtle harmony that's going on too. There's your subtle octave above. the songwriting of this how do i live without the ones i love time still turns the pages of the book it's burned whoa it would be such a struggle to continue a band after one of the key members has passed i, I mean that's such a special relationship being in a band together i I just think about being in a cast together with opera and, and our casts tend to travel around and, and match it with different casts. It's not like a band where you're together all the time, but even just being with the cast for three months or a year, you get really close. Wow. With a band like this and then losing somebody, that would be, I just don't know how you would go on afterwards. And I think writing a song about it is 
likely a very good way to continue. I'm gonna go back. Um, I wanna go back to this chorus. It's beautiful. Really? There we go. <laughs> Megadeth and Metallica. Oh man, so many, so many calls out to metal here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually curious. I wonder if this is the softest that they go because it does feel softer for the metal side. But it's so compassionate at the same time. Mmm, heartstrings. Foolish lies are growing old. It seems we're so invincible. The truth is so cold. A final song, a last request. A perfect chapter laid to rest. Now and then I try to find a place in my mind where you can. I just love the way he does this, like, boom, boom. It's a very, very quick slide up. By the way, as somebody who has spent lots of time editing different vocals, whenever a little slide up like that happens, it's like the thing that Melodyne or Autotune just can't deal with. Um, if you are going to tune it, you need to cut off on the sides of it and say, ignore that part tuning program. Uh, but it's just best to have a really great vocal that has good pitch. His voice sounds like it settles into the pitches very nicely. I don't know if there's been any kind of tuning on the back end. If there is, it's not something I hear in a plug, so I don't think it was auto-tune. It would probably be on the Melodyne side um, or a very, very tiny bit of auto-tune. But those little uh, moments that do the quick slides, I don't think those have been touched. It just it sounds really artifacty and messy whenever they get touched by a tuning program. I think they add a ton of character too. A perfect chapter laid to rest. Now and then I try to find a place in my mind where you can stay. You can stay away forever. How do I live Aww. without the ones I love? Time Slayer. I don't know. Actually, I don't know Slayer yet. I'm building my my knowledge of bands still. I don't. I don't think that this is footage from them. I feel like that's just not possible to have good footage. But I do feel like it's very representative of how this band came together, and that's. It's just so sweet and so sad. Okay. The book gets burned. Listen to the way he moves through consonants. He's got a lot of clarity in the sound and the enunciation. He's telling the story really, really well. Frayed. He really, instead of going quickly through the R and the F, he's lingering with them, afraid. And you can see the way he's shaping his mouth that he's doing what I would call really enjoying the enunciation. Nice. Yeah, there's quite actually quite a bit of nasality in the sound. It's really consistent though. I don't feel like it's a nasal pocket that gets stuck sometimes. It's just a part of his uh, signature tone quality. It would 
it could work for a country album, but there's more body in the sound and there's uh, an openness as well. If you look at his mouth, it actually is fairly open too. And when you think of, when I think about nasality and sound, I particularly think about grunge singers. Those tend to have a lot of nasality and that's partly because they keep their mouth more closed. So the sound is just going to exit more through the nose. He's opening his mouth quite a bit, but still is going to have some soft palate drop. And that provides essentially two possible exits, one through the nose and one through the mouth, that's creating this balanced sound for his particular tone quality. Interesting. When he starts to really wail here, I think I'm actually hearing him drop some of the nasality some. Wow. That is a very powerful sound. Oh. It's very powerful. It's got a roughness to it. So much body in the sound. One thing that's very different about this music video versus a lot of other music videos I've seen um, is that the band members mostly just are looking down. Yes, sometimes you need to look down to play an instrument, but there's a somberness to it, right? We're not really seeing much in the way of eyes. I think that it's clear that they're all... It feels like they're sunken inside a little bit. There's that, that sadness, which makes sense. It's a really cool jacket. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. It says Rev on there. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Interesting how much he goes for that bar colored vowel burned. It actually reminds me a little bit of David Draymond and how he goes into our colored vowels fully <laughs> without remorse. <laughs> By saying that in opera, the conductor would cringe. <laughs> Him. Oh my gosh. Even the, um, it looks like. Is that, I'm guessing it says rev. Anyhow, it looks like the strap is also uh, for their drummer that's passed. It's so hard to stay. So the singer's eyes definitely are looking up more in shadows. His eyes are looking at more, but it seems like everybody else is pretty downcast, understandably so. so far away. Aww.
that gives me the feels. I I felt my tear ducts open a couple times and I was like, shh, keep calm here. I not even really knowing the band that well. This is my first time listening to them. But the love that I feel they have for their drummer and the way they've honored him with this song is so beautiful. It's, um, you know, I used to think that metal was uh, very dark and cold. Uh, and really, I think that a lot of metal heads are very warm and fuzzy. You can feel how much they care about him and the, the keen loss that they feel. Wow. Um, what a, what an introduction to a band immediately feeling the loss of one of their members. Man, okay, uh, gonna go back here. Man, I just wanna say a lot of those images, I think there were a couple taken from Huntington Beach where I lived for a little while and it was, man, it just, it, that starts to hit close to home. Ah, beautifully done, beautifully done band that I've just met. That lead guitar melody is holds on the strings. Oh. Oh my gosh, the power and pain in his voice. Love the vibrato control at the end. Love the octave below that's doubled now. Um, but whoa, it's, uh, the voice feels like it's got so much pain and struggle in it. It's very accurate. The welling of emotion is so, so strong and present already. Um, I, I love this lyric. Um, your pain is gone, your hands untied. Um, just essentially acknowledging that this person is hopefully in a better place now. Oh, wow. Wow. The song is so, so much more than I expected. Oh my gosh. Look back a little more at that lyric. It's amazing. Wow, beautiful layerings of harmony. I love that long line that goes up, but then there's tons of layers underneath it. Great mixing of that vocal. Wow. Wow, it's gut-wrenching. No, don't be done yet. I need that one more time. Wow. Wow. Oh. Wow. Those vocalizations at the end especially were just gut-wrenching. And... I hear so much heart in the song and warmth. And at the same time, this incredible, powerful voice that has really 
fun character mannerisms, but can just belt and wail. And I feel I'm very interested in what else he's done. And I feel it's a great use of all of those emotions to channel them into a tribute song like this. Wow. Okay. First introduction to Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, yes, I would like some more. Please let me know in the comments below what else I should listen to. And if you would like to hear some more gut-wrenching metal, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.